Hi, my name is Barbara Mendoza. I am a, a SUNY at Tom Tree student, class of 2016, and I'm here to talk to you on how to do well on your OATs and also how to improve your optometry school application. So the first point on how to do well on your optometry admission test, the OATs, is to make sure you're doing well in your science classes in your undergrad uh, school. And this is important because if you are doing well in your classes as an undergrad, really getting the foundation down for your sciences, biology, organic chemistry, things like that, you will not have to cram a lot of new information last minute to study for the OATs. You're more or less reviewing what you already knew as in your undergrad, and it will help tremendously with uh, lowering the amount of time you're spending on the OATs. So the second point I can make on how to do well on the OATs is really redefining your definition of studying. So studying should be an intense process in which you're reading and rereading biology facts, kind of writing and rewriting, you know, chemistry equations, physics equations, just so you have them down pat and memorized in your mind, and really actively doing prob sample problems, even if the answers are provided, just so you get that extra practice in. Um, the third point on how to do well on your OATs is to get some good study material. Um, I personally purchased an online OAT review course, um, which came with a huge book about this thick of review notes and sample tests. Unfortunately, I did the foolish thing and took that course during the semester in which I had a full workload of classes so I wasn't able to attend the online sessions, um, but I did review from the notes that summer when I had more free time. Getting these uh, review notes actually helps because it will allow you to focus on what topics come up more often in these standardized exams as opposed to just looking back in your organic chemistry textbook, your biology textbooks, which have a way more information than you need for the OATs and these review classes have the select topics that come up more often on these exams. I also purchased the Top Score Pro software, which had three full-length OAT tests, which were extremely important um, to review what I've learned after studying for each section of the OAT. This brings me to my fourth point, which when studying for the OATs, you want to first begin your studying by taking some type of diagnostic test, a full-length test with this, the time that is allotted in the real exam, just to kind of get a starting point for where you should start studying, where you could improve greatly, where you're already pretty solid in the exam. So after you take the uh, diagnostic exam, that first full-length exam, um, that's going to be in your three months of hardcore studying for the OATs. And when you study for these OATs, like I mentioned before, please do not take a college class. Please not work full time. You may be able to pull off work part time, but you really need to focus your time on doing the OATs and studying for them very well because then you're just wasting your time and you don't want to waste your time. When you study for the OATs, I would suggest um, around five out of the seven days in the week to study. That might seem like a lot, but you are investing in your future uh, around three to four hours each day. When I studied, I used that review book that I set from the course, and I had a lot of time with the book by actually carrying it around with me. I didn't carry the whole book. I cut it up, I, and I brought it to cafes with me, Starbucks, just so i always active with the studying wherever I am. I also, and if you can't commit to the uh, three-month schedule in which you're studying around five days a week, you would need to extend the amount of time you're studying for the OATs, but I wouldn't extend it beyond six months because a little more than that, you probably will forget what you began learning six months ago because you're learning a lot, I mean not learning, reviewing a lot of information uh, at this time. 
my fifth point on studying for the OETs and getting a really great score is to tackle each of the sections of the OET separately. And I'm going to review the sections uh, a little bit later. Um, but when you're studying for them, study you know the chemistry, biology, physics separately, just so you can kind of review the whole thing um, one segment at a time. And once you review each section, do full length exams. Um, and these full length exams should be done around two weeks just before your OATs. I suggest two weeks because you still have a reasonable amount of time to adjust what you need. And I mean, what I mean by this is to study what, study again or review again what your low score was in the review tests um, and also by taking full length practice exams, you kind of get a feel of how long the exam really is and it is really long. So you really want to practice this before taking the test because it's like running a marathon. You have to train before you do it and it's the same thing for the OATs. You have to train yourself before you take the test because you're just going to get worn out by the first section. <laughs> So now I'm going to go on to the OAT itself. I like to break the OAT up into seven sections. The first is the optional uh, survey. It takes 15 minutes, um, but I would say this is super important to do just to kind of get acclimated to the testing room, to kind of be um, OK with your seat, to be OK with the computer, to kind of calm down, because you will be nervous. Well, at least I was. So after the optional tutorial, you have the survey of natural sciences, which is 90 minutes long. So 90 minutes is a large number, and there are, but there are a lot of questions within these 90 minutes. Um, the survey of natural sciences are broken down into uh, three subjects. You have general biology, general chemistry, and organic chemistry. The test usually averages around uh, 40 questions for biology, 30 for organic chemistry, 30 for general chemistry. I would suggest studying for the biology, general chemistry, and organic chemistry separately. As I said before, you just don't want to get everything muddled up in your mind. Um, also, keep in mind for this test, um, the OETs will not give you a reference table. So any of the general chemistry equations that you had previously given to you by professors, you will need to know yourself for the test. Um, how to study for these separate sections, I used the review notes that I had um, from the course. You can look back at your course notes that you did in your undergrad, but again, it might be too cumbersome for what they actually focus on. To do well on the biology section, um, that's more or less reading and rereading, like I said before, the um, maybe your general biology textbook or the review notes. For general chemistry, you really need to get your hands on some practice problems um, just so you could kind of expect what type of questions they might ask and what topics they will. Organic chemistry, if we remember this class fondly as an undergrad, you know that there is a lot of information in this, in, in this class. Um, the OET will not test you on everything, so finding those review notes from you know, either a friend that has the course or someone who took the, the test before and can kind of narrow down the topics for you is super important. The next section is the reading comprehension test, which is 50 minutes. Okay, so now you're past the survey of natural sciences. All right, you unloaded all that information and now you have to read for 50 minutes. This was daunting. Um, for me, this was my weakest section when I did the diagnostic test, and that was because I didn't know how to do this section until an optometry student actually gave me the secret, so I'm giving it to you. So what you do is, um, as you read the passage, there's, the test will give you a scrap paper and a pen. What you do is you mark down, you know, paragraph one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on your paper, and write a one sentence quick summary of that paragraph. 
and any, jot down any key words, like any key vocabulary words in that passage um, next to the summarizing sentence. This might seem kind of time consuming, but in the end it's going to save you a lot of time. Why? Because the questions on the OAT reading comprehension test will ask you details. So you have this seven paragraph essay in front of you and they're asking you a detail about, I don't know, a dinosaur's tooth. What paragraph is that tooth example in? Well, you have your little um, road map beside you. You look it up, you find the paragraph, bam, that's the answer. Really jotting the main ideas down for each paragraph will save you a lot of time in the end. So there's three passages in the reading comprehension test. Um, within the 50 minutes, you will have to answer 40 questions. So that kind of gives you an idea of how many questions you'll be asked and the time to allot for each question. After the reading comprehension, you have a break. Woohoo! You do want to take this break. Believe me, your brain will be almost fried. Not yet, hopefully. So please go outside the testing area, walk around a little bit, use the bathroom. However, you only have 15 minutes for this break. Make sure you're wearing a watch so you could come back in time um, because if you go past 15 minutes, the next section will start without you. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> and the next section is the physics section. Dun, dun, dun. The physics can be a hard section just because um, there is no reference table, which means the equations need to be in your head already. Now this is kind of daunting because if we remember general physics in our undergrad courses, there's a lot of equations. And yes, you have to kind of know a lot of equations for this uh, test, this part of the test. But lucky for you and for me, there's no calculus. So there's no calculus equations you have to memorize, just more or less basic equations such as Newton's laws. Which equations should you know? Well, that's kind of hard to tell. Um, I more or less use the review notes to, as a guide, um, but I know I did, I did compare my textbook to the review notes. My textbook had all, way more equations than what was suggested in the review course, so I kind of stuck to the review course notes. Memorized the equations that did not show up on the exam, but knowing the equations that were presented to me, I would felt more confident going into the physics part and um, doing quite well in it. Again, some, equation, some questions will be more conceptual than equation-based. Sometimes you could guess um, the answer. You could kind of rule out the like three out of the five answers and get to the best two just on conceptual thinking. So sometimes if you don't know the equation specifically, you could kind of think about the problem and go from there. So after physics, um, you're going to be doing some more math and quantitative reasoning. Um, some of the topics covered in quantitative reasoning are probability, trigonometry, um, algebra, more or less high school math. Um, there's no calculus, again, on this section. For this um, section, it's really good to review, not a OAT review course notes that I had. I actually grabbed the GRE uh, review book and used the quantitative um, review from that one. My friend had it, and I'm like, just grabbed it and used it. It has a lot more information than some of the OAT reviews because a lot of the OAT's reviews focus on the sciences, chemistry, biology, as opposed to the math. So grab a GRE book in the library or from a friend and use the quantitative analysis from that section to study for the quantitative on the OATs. So after the quantitative analysis section, you're, you're almost done. You have a post-survey to complete. It is optional. It doesn't count towards your score. At that point, I just really wanted to see what my score was because the OAT gave an instantaneous score. So after completing the survey, will be the longest 30 seconds of your life. It will feel like three hours. Um, what happens is the computer will say, calculating score, calculating score, while well, the beads of sweat drip down your forehead. Um, and then it will show your instantaneous score. Hopefully you did great, walk out with a smile, and hopefully these tips will help you on your uh, OAT adventure. <laughs>